We appreciate your time and hope you'll find today's webinar to be beneficial. In today's presentation, we'll be showing you one of the new features from the 2018 release of Inventor, model-based definition. What is model-based definition, you ask? Well, let's take a look. Model-based definition, also known as MBD, is a powerful new set of tools for adding 3D annotations, geometric dimensioning and tolerancing, also known as GD&T, and other manufacturing information directly on a 3D model. Once completed, the file can be printed to a 3D PDF format and can be exported to a STEP 242 file, which is machine readable and can be directly used by software applications and CNC tools. This model-based engineering technology is already in use by the automotive, aerospace, heavy equipment, and military slash defense sectors, as well as some product manufacturers. Today, we're going to start our presentation by having Jason give you a review of 3D annotations, how to select and edit, as well as relocate them. He'll follow that by showing how to create a simple leader text annotation, and finally, an output example utilizing Inventor's 3D printing engine. Then he'll pass it over to me, and I'll show you how to create geometric annotations on part models using dimensions, general tolerance features, and datum reference frames, and 3D annotations on assembly models. And then at the end of the demonstration, we'd like to answer any questions you may have. All right, Jason, so I'm going to pass it over to you. Okay. Let me make you presenter here. All right. And Dave, uh, make sure that uh, you can see my screen. Yep, we can see it and hear you and everything. All right. So just like Dave said, I'm going to go through and give you an introduction to the uh, 3D annotation. So you'll notice currently right now that I have a model open that has those annotations applied. But also with an inventor, you're going to notice that in this part file, I have an annotate tab. Now this is broken down into different sections here. So we have um, subdivided panels, all right? So you'll notice that we have uh, commands associated with the GDNT over here. And then also we have um, dimensional whole thread notes and surface textures located here in the center. And then additionally, we have text-based annotations that can be used um, are utilized using the notes panel here. You'll notice over in our model browser that we have an annotations folder and also a tolerance features folder. Okay. Now here, you'll notice that I have um, certain amount of linear dimensions, some radial dimensions, and also a diameter dimension. And if you've noticed, while I'm hovering over these in my model browser, notice how they're highlighting over in my graphics window, and it's vice versa. So if I highlight over or select anything over here on the dimensions, you'll notice that they highlight in my model browser as well. All right. So now what I want to do is Actually, we're going to talk about how we can use some of our selection filters to select these annotations. You'll notice right now that I have select face and edges, which is default um, coming into the part environment. So I can select these individually, but one thing that I did want to point out is notice if I try to window, if I do a a window selection or a crossing window selection, nothing happens. But I have the ability to change my selection filter to select annotations, and this allows me to 
drag and create those windows or crossing windows. And a nice little shortcut um, utilizing your keyboard is if I hold down shift and right click, notice there's my selection filters right here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and change it back to select faces and edges because that'll let me choose them individually. And we're gonna go in and you'll notice some of these dimensions here, you know, they need to be relocated. So that's easy. If I notice if I select and hold this dimension, I can move it and drag it. I can do the same thing for this one over here to the right. And then of course, we have the ability to toggle the alignment of these dimensions. So for example, we notice how this one is kind of running in the Z direction. Maybe I want it to be rotated towards the right. So I can right click on that dimension and choose toggle alignment and notice the results that we have there. And then maybe I want to do the same thing for this dimension. Okay. Now making adjustments or adding um, certain things, maybe you want to add, since I know that I have four of these um, radiuses here that are 0.5, there's two ways that we can go in and modify this. I can right click and choose edit, or it's as simple as performing a double click on that dimension. And then it'll bring up my little mini toolbar here. And I can add text or symbols, whatever I need to. Well, let's just say for this one, I'm gonna say I have four of these at a radius of 0.5. And then I'll just accept that. And you'll notice the change that we have done here at the bottom. Also, um, like it was said, I can add notes. So for instance, I'm going to add a leader text. And let's just say I'm gonna add some kind of um, text specifying maybe a material. So I'm gonna say assign material for this particular part. And I'm actually gonna utilize um, a eye property. So I'm gonna grab my properties from the model and I'm gonna choose material. I'm gonna add that down here to my text and say okay. And currently right now it says generic because that is the current material that I have selected. So let's just go ahead and change this. Maybe I want this to be carbon steel. And notice how my text updates. Because I've built that link um, with my text to pulling from an eye property. Now, another thing that I wanna point out is with the uh, view representations. So let me go ahead and move some of these notes and things here just to clean it up just a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. But you'll notice that you can set up different views utilizing the annotation text. So for instance, if I go to my right view, I want you to notice that some of these dimensions are going to disappear. All right, so here, notice that my dimension of, I think it was like four and a quarter, those here on the top and the bottom disappeared. So you can see those of you that are familiar with creating view representations that that can be utilized as well when creating those views. All right. So the nice thing here is to be able to output this as a 3D PDF. So this tool, you'll notice that I have options here to include different view representations. So you can choose just specific ones that you're wanting. And also you can choose which properties that you want to 
um, to be included with this PDF creation as well. All right. And then a really cool thing is, and what Dave mentioned, was I have the ability to generate and attach a step file to this 3D PDF. And you'll notice that we have certain options in here on the uh, different application protocols. So the one that Dave mentioned was the step 242. And we would, once those are selected, then we would just hit publish, but I already published this part out. So I'm just gonna pull up my PDF software here and we'll take a look at it. Now, if you've never seen a 3D PDF, notice we have a specific template that was set up and notice the information that I have it pulling over, uh, the designer, um, me as the engineer here. But the nice thing is this is just not a plain PDF. Notice that I can actually rotate this part around and look at it, um, manipulate it to truly see the dimensions that I'm needing to see. And then also to point out over here towards the right. Notice that I have a step file that has been attached to this PDF, which will allow me to either open it, I can save it, possibly to a different location where I'm putting my other engineering data. And then of course, since with Inventor, we would be able to open that up or any kind of uh, machinery that needed the step file, they could use that as well. Okay, so with that being said, Dave's going to go in a little bit deeper on creating some of these annotations, and uh, now I'm going to turn it over to Dave. Thanks, Jason. Um, that was that was pretty cool. So uh, was that shift keyboard shift on the keyboard and right click for the. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Shift on the keyboard and right click. It just kind of cuts out from you having to go all the way up to your quick access toolbar to make those changes. I never knew about that one. That's a good tip. Great. And I really like, too, the uh, um, the use of the view representations uh, to be able to um, have those 3D annotations um, split up, if you will. Um, so you could do it by the orientation of the view. <clears throat> right, or even or, sections if you have so many dimensions that you're needing. That's great. Mm -hmm. And those are automatically assigned. Right. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Super. Good, great job. Um, all right. So uh, delving into, into my portion of the presentation today, um, what I thought we'd use is a um, uh, a front step assembly for a um, helicopter uh, skid um, assembly. So um, we'll we'll just go with that assembly, and we'll look at the different uh, the different components and how we would use our model based uh, definition tools um, to to do this. So let's go ahead and take a look at the um, this front step assembly here. We'll go ahead and we'll open up that file and just kind of look and see what we've got here. So we've got some components. We've got this mounting plate down here, which is curved, and, and this um, actually fastens to um, the landing gear of, of a helicopter. And, um, and then we have the, the actual step tube, uh, which would stick out, and that's where somebody would step up so they can step up into the helicopter. And this would be similar to um, a, a step up on, on a truck or something like that. So just uh, gives the, the pilot and the passengers the ability to step up uh, rather than having to try to get all the way up into the helicopter with a leap. So, um, so again, the mounting plate here on the bottom, the step tube, and then we have a little cap. And then we even have some 3M sticky tape um, uh, for grip 
that that goes on the top there. So that's what we're looking at here for for design. Um, and we've we've gone and completed all this. But what we want to do is we'll take a look at a, a simple part. We'll take a look at this end cap, and um, and go ahead and create some um, some uh, uh, tolerance features on that. So I'm just going to right click on this component here, and we'll go ahead and we'll open up that end cap. So uh, we see it here. Uh, what we want to do is head straight over to the annotate tab. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create our first tolerance feature. So um, I'm going to go ahead and click on the tolerance feature and brings up a mini toolbar just ready for us to, to make a selection. And I'm just going to go ahead and select this outer surface of the, uh, of the end cap here. And when I do that, Inventor automatically recognizes that as a shaft. And I'm able to then click and select the OK. So what it does is it automatically gives me a plane, kind of what you saw that Jason was pointing out. Um, it's it's placing this on a on a plane based on my selection. So uh, one of the things that you can do while you're placing this is um, you can use the space bar if you're able to toggle between different uh, planar views, and we'll we'll take a look at that um, in another option, maybe in the assembly file, because uh, this selection there's only one plane. So, uh, but a, sp a space bar would allow you to change uh, orientations, planar orientations. But we also can use the tab key on the keyboard, and we can change the orientation of the text. So we'll go ahead and and place this so that this is a little more legible to us, and the other the other option we do have before we click to place is we could do a right mouse click and there you see there's the the tab to toggle alignment and um and of course there's a shift for an annotation select an annotation plane if we wanted to select a different one or we can also align to geometry these things are going to be limited to the feature that you're selecting so depending on what the geometry is you may not be able to change these two here, uh, but you'll always be able to to tab and toggle the alignment of the text. So uh, I'll go ahead and left click to place that. Um, and then what we see here is we we see the actual preview of the of the placement of the annotation, but then over here above the mini toolbar is another preview. And you can see that as I move my mouse around, I'm able to highlight these um, dimensions. Now, um, the first thing it's going to do is um, it's going to also attach a, a datum reference uh, feature to this. This can be toggled off. So um, all of this is, is editable in this uh, mini toolbar. And then also selectable is each one of the areas of this uh, feature. So I can change uh, the type here, the type of uh, GD&T symbol. I'll leave it on cylindricity. And uh, I can also come in here and I can click and I can change the uh, tolerance value. So maybe I change that to 0.01. Any kind of edits that you make in here, all you got to do is press enter. <clears throat> excuse me, after making that edit, and it makes that little portion of the mini toolbar disappear and bring you back to this preview. All right, so um, one of the things I want to point out here is up here in the uh, the, the dimension itself, um, I can click on that and you can see from that I can specify what type of dimension I want it to be and also specify the precision and the value uh, here. So um, we'll talk a little bit more about what we're seeing here in just a second. So I'm just going to go ahead and click the uh, OK button here to actually finish the placement of that. Now, a couple things happen when you when you finish that placement. You'll notice on the left is that now that folder is added for the tolerance features. So if I uh, expand that, you can see there it recognized the, the, the feature that I selected, which was the shaft. And it's created, um, you know, it's showing us the diameter dimension, the feature control frame, and the datum identifier 
and you can see that it actually created uh, a DRF, a datum reference frame. So all of those things happened with that, with that one selection. The other thing that popped up is this tolerance advisor, and this is a toggle, and it usually pops up and should pop up automatically, but if it doesn't, it's a toggle here. You can toggle it on and toggle it off. What the tolerance advisor does is uh, advises you, gives you uh, messages of information, messages of warnings, um, and, and helps you to um, continue to um, uh, define your GDNT uh, that you want for your model. So if if you place a uh, a feature frame and you know it's uh, maybe perpendicularity or something else, um, you can play with the different uh, options to see what one works better and how uh, the advisor responds to that. So it's really nice that the advisor the advisor is is intelligent in that regard. So we'll go ahead and we'll place our, um, our next feature here, which will be um, this uh, planar face here. So we'll just do tolerance feature again. We'll select that plane, or that face, and you can see that it automatically recognizes that as a planar surface. And I can click the checkbox here. And again, here's where, when it comes to placement, I can hit my space bar and I can toggle how do I want that showing up? And that, you know, that may uh, play into what views you want that to be able to show up in um, as you as you um, either send it to a 3D PDF or even a 2D um, drawing. So, and we'll talk about that in a little bit as well. So I'm just gonna shift to uh, toggle the plane and tab will toggle the um, orientation of the, uh, of the dimension itself or of the feature control frame. So I'll just go ahead and click to place that. And again, I have uh, the ability to toggle on, do I wanna create a new uh, datum reference uh, frame or not? Um, do I wanna come in here and do I wanna change it from perpendicularity to uh, any one of my other GD&T symbols? Uh, do I wanna use flatness or do I want to use uh, parallelism, something like that. So we're going to, you know, Inventor's kind of smart and the Tolerance Advisor's kind of smart in, in what it's kind of picking for me. Um, so again, something that you can, you can look at and go with and then see how does, how does, uh, how does the Tolerance Advisor react to that or what else may I need to do after that's done. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, edit this guy here. And we'll just go ahead and make him 0.01, hit enter, hit the checkbox here. So now you can see that in the uh, tolerance advisor, it's, um, you know, things I didn't point out uh, after placing the first one. Uh, the DRF is, is not referenced, just a message for us, information. And also one or more surfaces are under constraint. And again, not that that needs to be addressed. It's just informational message for you at this point. So that's the second feature. So the next thing I want to do is we'll we'll define uh, this feature, the um, the hole here. So we'll do tolerance feature. We'll select that face. It recognizes that as a simple hole, and click the checkbox. And again, we will use the uh, tab key to orient that. I'll just bring it over to this side. So I'll click to place that. And this one's going to be using, because it's a hole, it's going to be using automatically the positional tolerance. And it's giving me the dimension of that feature. And so let's talk about that now, because this has happened uh, on both of these dimension or uh, features of size, is the dimension shows up and it's got a tolerance value already applied to it. I'm going to just click OK to, um, to accept that. Okay, and kind of explain where that's coming from. So one of the cool things that Inventor uh, does with this um, model-based definition features is we'll use what you specify in your uh, dimensions. So if you're using tolerance values in uh, your parameters, those are all automatically promoted 
into the model based definition environment so you don't have to recreate those. So a very good handy feature there is that that's all brought forward. So since I did that actually in the in my dimensions in my parameters, that's automatically brought forward. So if I if I didn't do it there though, then I could do it here in the model based definition. I could click and change go go you would see a default and then I could change it to whichever uh uh, value I want and then make the edits there so you can do it in either place or if you're accustomed to doing it in the uh, parameters it's going to graduate to the uh, the MBD environment okay so we just keep an eye on we see that things are happening over here in the tolerance features uh, we've got our datum reference frame a our datum reference frame B um, and things are things are looking good. We're not getting any warnings or anything crazy going on here in the uh, in the tolerance advisor, so that makes us happy. Um, all right. So again, I could stop here. It just depends on what it what is it though I want to define. Do I want to define this this surface here um, with um, a tolerance frame? How about this feature here or this curvature here? So it just depends on what um, what you want to do. Uh, whether it's all of it, if you want it to be fully defined here in the MD, MBD environment or, or not. So I'm going to go ahead and just create one or two more here. I'll select this curved face and you can see that it just recognizes that revolved surface. I click OK and again now I can do a shift and shift back and forth between the three different planes that are available here. So I'll select this this plane here, and I like the uh, I like the orientation of the uh, text. So I'll click in place. So you can see here that it's doing a um, a profile profile of a surface, and then we also have the ability to do circularity or concentricity. So um, again, Inventor is going to advise me and uh, I'll just go ahead and accept that and place that. And you can see that now that I, because I've added enough information to this that my datum reference uh, information message has gone away. So it's basically saying, okay, now I, now I fully understand this part a little bit better. And this other message, again, just informational, one or more surfaces are unconstrained. Well, that just means, uh, we just haven't put a put a dimension in there yet. So um, once we were once we are fully uh, defined in the MBD environment, then then that message would go away as well. So it's just letting us know that uh, that we don't have that. So the other thing I want to do is um, we'll go ahead and talk about a couple other things here. The size of these um, uh, these dimensions, these annotations, are uh, controlled here in the uh, um, annotation scale environment. So um, they're set to auto, but uh, you should also be able to drop drop that down and um, and uh, manipulate that to a to a scale if you want to. So um, there's that. All right, so let's take a look at uh, dimensioning. So one, I can add a dimension um, to a to a feature. I can use the dimension tool to say uh, maybe add this dimension from this face to this face and get the depth of that of that hole. And again, I can manipulate where that placement is. So I'll just go ahead and click to place that. Now, here in the dimension toolbar, I can click here in the value and then specify the precision. So what, what precision do I want for that? I specify that precision here. And of course, any text uh, prefix or postfix that would go to that can go there. Okay. And the last uh, thing that we can do is we can promote a dimension. So I'm going to use from this sketch here, I'm just going to right click and turn on the visibility of the sketch and I'm going to hover over that depth dimension, that 1.00, and I'm going to right click and I'm going to promote. 
So we have the ability to promote dimensions from our sketch model or our features to be used in the MBD environment. And then I'll come back over here and turn the visibility of that back off. So now that's looking pretty good. Okay, so I did get another message over in the Tolerance Advisor. It's just letting me know that the model contains external annotation elements. Just letting me know that I've just got some dimensions in here um, that are external to, you know, the tolerance features uh, as far as their understanding is concerned. All right, so but we're looking good. We really like what we're seeing here, and um, we'll we can save this. And the next thing we'll do is um, let's take a look at how. Um, we can utilize these these dimensions downstream. So, you know, the main purpose for the MBD environment is for having that one source of truth, that one file in the model file that has all the dimensions and information that I need to send that to manufacturing to get it built. So I don't need an additional drawing, uh, 2D drawing to make that happen. I can just send this part file downstream and um, all the information is contained in this one file. So that's the ultimate goal. That's where we're trying to go. Um, and as the technology evolves, that this will become better and better. But Jason and I, we see this as also a great opportunity um, to, to utilize this technology in our drawings uh, currently. So this is a good workflow. One, um, I think you guys would all agree, that having this information right here in the model at your fingertips for tolerancing for dimensions can help you informationally for uh, with your uh, with your modeling processes. So just having that there is helpful. But let's take a look at going downstream. So we're going to go back to the uh, my home tab, and I've got a drawing started here of the cap. And you can see that I've got um, you know a couple dimensions in here already. Let's show you how we can bring this, those, those model-based definitions forward into the modeling view. So I'm gonna right click on this view over here and I'm going to retrieve model annotations. When I click there, you can see that those annotations automatically show up here and I can toggle off, hey, I don't wanna see dimensions or I don't wanna see feature control frames. I can, you know, what do I wanna see? What do I wanna bring forward in this particular view? So I'm going to click uh, OK to this, and I like those two uh, objects showing up, and I'll just go ahead and move the dimensions around so you can see you have the full ability to uh, massage them and put them where you want in your drawing view, and the feature control frame follows and sticks right there with it. So very, uh, very well done, I think. We'll do the same thing to the to this right side. Uh, look at that. There's our our B datum, and here's also our dimensions. Even though I already had a couple dimensions, um, they're, uh, they're available here. I can turn that off so that the dimensions don't come forward. So again, it's a choice to make. Uh, in this drawing, I already had dimensions, so I don't have to bring them forward. But I think, man, that's a great thing to be able to do right there. Okay, so, all right. So I'll click OK to that. And again, these can be massaged to where I want. And I just think this is just way quicker. I couldn't have done this this fast um, in, um, in the drawing environment alone. Look at that. So there's those dimensions. This guy here, uh, we'll bring him back. I don't really like the placement of him, so maybe I wouldn't bring him in there uh, at, that, at that position. Um, in a, in a section view, maybe a side view, but you, you you have choices here. So that's really cool just to be able to bring that forward to the 2D drawing environment in your current workflows. So this is, this is nothing that would change your current workflow. You can still do this, but now you've also, in addition, got a 3D model that you could send down line and has that information for you. So I think it's very important. All right, so let's go back over to the assembly environment. And we'll take a look at the model-based definition in the assembly environment. This this portion of the uh, of the presentation is only for 2018.1, so you got to have the .1 release in order to do annotations in the assembly environment. It wasn't ready for prime time with the uh, the 2018 
uh, release. So uh, that was a that comes with that update. So what we want to do is go to the annotate tab again, and let's go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and use the dimension tool. And I'm going to select the dimension. I want to dimension the uh, the height of this cap in relation to the uh, the uh, step tube. So I'll go ahead and select this face here. And then I'll zoom in a little bit and make sure I get that face, the top face of the uh, step tube. So here you can see that it's giving me that plane, allowing me to um, to select the plane. I can toggle back and forth between a side or this or this side or kind of a front view. I'll toggle that, and then I can tab to change the orientation of my text. So when I get that placed where I want, left click, and again, then I can edit tolerance. Uh, or precision, I should say. Then I can specify if any uh, tolerance is needed for that. Click the checkbox. Dimension's good to go. Um, so maybe the next thing we want to do is another dimension. We'll select this uh, tube here, and then we'll select this. You can see it, it wants to give us the diameter of the tube, but if we come down here to make a second selection and click, actually before we click, notice that it's giving me a little angle dimension um, helper there. So it's letting me know that it's going to create an angle dimension. And again, I can tab to toggle my text value and click to place that. And we'll just kind of take a look at that. And you can see that that's looking kind of nice, all right? Dim able to start putting some dimensions on here uh, on, within our assembly view. So one of the other limit, kind of a limitation at this point, I see it as a limitation right now is right now I want to go ahead and um, and put a dimension uh, from the uh, as a reference I guess to the from the front face to this whole location, and because of the curve curvature of this surface, um, I'm limited on my alignments. So we'll go ahead and do a dimension, select that face, and we'll select the whole center and you can see if i if i i'm touching my uh, my space bar here i can't really make a any any change there i could try to do um right click and see if i can't um select an annotation plane and there i can kind of go down so um just because of my limitations on my on my planes on this particular um, object, it it's a little difficult to. Um, let me see if I do that. So that's a little calf bad, but you can see that's that's going aligned to the hole, and then that would be a, a another option, but that would look, be looking straight down. That would be kind of weird on the drawing. So again, you just got to kind of play with the kind of orientation, but because of this curvature uh, and the placement of that hole, your default location is, is perpendicular to the hole. And so we're going to go with that for right now, just so you can see for, for a uh, time that uh, how that would place. So then I'm going to come up here and drag the mini toolbar. I'm going to click here and change the precision, one decimal place, and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to say this is a reference dimension. Okay, and I click the checkbox here. If I, after the placement, I realize I, I want that to be uh, toggled, I can either select it or I can just hover over it and right click and I can toggle the alignment. So even after the fact, I can go in and toggle the alignment of my model base definition. Um, okay, over here in the uh, uh, in the manage portion, you can see here's my drop down. So if I want to change the scale of my model base definitions, I can go. Let's jump it up to five to one. So you can see there, I have the ability to uh, to toggle that. Uh, generally, like to just leave that on auto. All right, so one other thing that we uh, I want to point out is visibility of these. So you may want to define these and have them available in the model um, so that you have that information, but you may also want to turn off that display, either temporarily or 
you know, until you need to recall it. So you do have the, the ability to turn off the visibility of your uh, dimensions, your 3D annotations. So again, those visibilities can be turned off either um, until you just need them again or as a, on a temporary basis. All right, so um, and that would be that would be it there for the uh, the demo side of our presentation. Um, I think you again will find that to be a very useful tool even to use now. So um, you know, going back to our to finish our presentation, just to take a look at this is what we were working with. This design is the front step assembly of a helicopter. Um, it goes on the landing. The landing gear and just makes it easier to get up into the helicopter and so that's what we are working on so this concludes our demonstration on inventors model based definition tools uh, today we've seen how autodesk has developed a robust a robust set of tools for use in a model based engineering environment the 3d and geometric annotations in the part modeling environment became available in the initial release of 2018 and again um, the 2018.1 release, the 3D annotations were developed for the, the assembly environment. And so as you've seen, the MBD tools can be used to create the dimensions, the GD and T symbols, and they can be promoted to the 2D drawing environment. So we invite you uh, to begin learning and using Inventor's model-based definition tools today and take the first step with Autodesk into the model-based engineering workflows. And we hope you have enjoyed this presentation. All right. Um, if there are any questions, please type those into the questions pane now. <laughs> All right. We've got a greetings from Arion. Welcome, guys. Glad you're here. Great. And if there are no questions currently, if you think of anything later on, you can email that um, email address on the screen, events at asti.com, and we will get that to the appropriate person. Um, there is a question, can, I, can the annotation be toggled on and off in the 3D PDF? That's a good question. Jason, do you know uh, in the 3D PDF, can, uh, is that are the model based definitions on a layer or something that can be toggled off in the 3D PDF? I'm, I don't think so, but uh, I'm not sure. Jason, are you there? You're muted if you're there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, right now I don't see that as a layer in Bluebeam, but it seems like. Uh, Remember something like that in Adobe that we could toggle that on and off. Okay. Well, what we'll do, uh, Joseph, is we'll uh, we'll we'll find that out for you and uh, and get you that answer. Uh, it, it may be something that's not there yet. I ha I don't remember seeing it, but uh, if it is, we'll find it. And uh, you never know; it may come in the future. All right. Good question. And, um... Will asks, I don't see the invisible of the dimension in the 3D model. Can you show that again? The, repeat the that again. The invisible of the th dimension in the 3D model. Um, are we talking about over here in the um, showing the dimension, like turning the visibility off? Is that what we were asking? It's just a right click and and check and uncheck the visibility. And I think you can right click on the annotations folder as well and get all of them at the same time. And get all of them at the same time. Um, Maybe not. Yeah, you can read. Well, it says repeat visibility. Let's see what it's doing there. Well, let's well if that one, we don't have that. You always have the view tab up at the top to control all of the visibility. Mm hmm. For the object visibility? Yes, there is a 3D annotations 3D. check. 
there you go good job 3d annotation so you have that toggle added to the object visibility so you could that's similar to turning off work planes right where you you got them on um, really here so if I right click on this you can see that it actually is showing the visibility as toggled on but because under the view tab the object visibility it's kind of a temporary toggle so if I click it they all they all show up again so um, that one that one's just kind of a toggle where as this one's kind of more of a hey I'm really turning it off and then explicitly turning that one back on so if you had this one off right here but then toggled the visibility off here but back on that one stays off because it's actually being controlled here all right I think that answered his question um the scale of the 3d base dimension is auto and is disabled how how do you change that you can only change that scale if it's in a new design representation. So currently, Dave, are you in? You're not in the master now, are you? I'm I'm in, let's see, for design view representation, I'm in the assembly and I'm in the um uh so I'm in the default view. Yeah, and so I you'll notice if you switch to master, that will gray out. Yeah. Now I can't click on it. So if we go back to so if we go back to the part model environment, it, that's where that is grayed out there, and that's because I'm in the master view. So if I switch to isometric, then I have the ability to make that change. Good question. Great question. All right. Um, we have a few thank yous, but I don't see any more questions. Um, so I guess we can go ahead and wrap this Great. webinar up. Thanks for your questions, guys. We appreciate the participation.